Welcome back to the channel. What we have right here is the Samsung Galaxy A51, which is essentially the phone you'd be buying if you want a lot of cameras, a really good screen, and a really low price. This phone is the mid-range phone from Samsung that's selling under $400 or possibly even under $300, and yet it still has four cameras on the back, a 32 megapixel selfie camera, a very large screen, and as the advertisements have been saying, if, you, if you've seen any of the commercials, they talk about awesome camera, awesome screen, long-lasting battery life. And in this video, I wanna test out this phone and see how true those claims actually are and figure out if this phone is actually as good as, as Samsung claims it to be. Now, I wanna talk about a couple things in this video, but I wanna start off with the physical aspects of this phone. Starting off with the back, you'll see it looks strikingly similar to the Galaxy S20. And I have the S20 right here. They both have a very, very similar camera bump, although this one is slightly shallower. And on here, we do have four different cameras, and I'll talk about those later on but we have an ultra wide, we have a wide angle, and we have a macro camera, as well as a depth camera that you won't necessarily take pictures with, but it does assist in a couple other things I'll talk about. We have a flash on the back. We do not have a microphone next to that camera, so the microphones you'll be using for videos are on the top and the bottom of this phone, and I'll show you those in a second. And otherwise on the back, we do not have wireless charging, but we do have a couple colors we can choose, and it kind of has this really nice kind of shimmer as you turn it around in different lighting. So I think the back looks really, really cool. It's a plastic back, however, uh, and so that's something that a lot of people showed some concern with after using this for a while. I can say that the plastic back doesn't really seem like any kind of issue to me. Uh, it feels really nice. It looks really premium from a distance. You might even think that it is a glass back. The bumpers around this phone are also plastic, but again, they do look like metal, especially from a distance. So this phone does look more premium than it feels, but it still feels pretty nice in your hand. I like the round edges. And on the front, the screen is not curved, which is kind of a benefit for some people. You don't have the accidental edge touches from your palm. Uh, so, you know, pros and cons there. Now, looking at the bottom of this phone, we do have a speaker on the right side, the microphone, like I talked about, you'll be using for videos, of course, for phone calls as well. Then we have the USB Type-C charging in the middle, capable of 15 watt fast charging, which is good. And then on the left side, we have our headphone jack. I know a lot of people are excited to see that on a phone in 2020, especially when like the iPhone SE, for example, doesn't have that. Now on the left side of the phone, we have our SIM tray. Now, depending on which model you get, you could have dual SIM with a micro SD card slot in there as well, which is nice to have if you're trying to travel between countries or whatever situation you're in where you need two different SIMs. On the top, we have our other microphone, and on the right side, we have our volume rocker next to the side key. And I say side key instead of power button because this phone, just like all the other Samsung phones coming out, has a reprogrammable button here. So you can turn the screen on and off with a single tap, but if you tap and hold it, or if you double tap it or triple tap it, it can do different things with your phone. On the front of this phone, we have the very large six and a half inch display that's 2400 by 1080 pixels. It gets really bright, has really good color, honestly. On the top, we have the hole punch camera. So the selfie camera is actually a 32 megapixel camera, which to be honest, I don't even know why you really need that many megapixels on a selfie camera. But then down below, we have our fingerprint sensor, which is under the screen. So again, you're seeing a lot of the really good flagship features that we saw on the S10 and the S20 trickling down to the budget models here, and I, and I really do like to see that. Now, one unfortunate drawback with this phone is that it does not have a water resistance rating. It's something that I really like to see on especially more expensive phones, and this is kind of the border where it would be really nice to have this. If you drop a $400 phone in the water, that's really gonna suck. But it's just something that they had to cut the cost somewhere so they don't have an IP water resistance rating. Now, talking about the internals of this phone, this has an octa-core processor. Unfortunately, it's not Snapdragon, uh, but it, honestly, I don't really feel that it's especially slow. I can swipe around. I'll show you an app opening test right here. Uh, it opens them reasonably quick, and you know, using this phone doesn't really seem to hold me back. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 12 gigabytes, or 128 gigabytes, rather, of storage. Uh, so I really like seeing the 128 gigs on a phone of this caliber, because because you are able to record in 4K and recording in 4K takes up a lot of space. So I like having that extra storage so you can really utilize all of your cameras on this phone without worrying about running out of storage. Now, this also has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So the awesome battery claim 
for the most part is pretty true. You're not going to get through three days with this phone necessarily, but I'm easily getting through one day without any problems at all. And depending on how you're using the phone, I think most people can very comfortably get through a full day using this phone. Now the SD card slot on the side can house up to 512 gigabytes for a ton of expandable storage. Now getting into the cameras of this phone, I want to start off with the macro camera because that's something in my A71 review I kind of complained about. I said I really wish that was the telephoto lens instead, and I, I do still wish that about this phone as well, but I'm starting to see how a macro lens could actually be kind of fun to use. So here is a picture that I took. It's only five megapixels, so that's kind of a drawback there, but you're gonna get some close-up shots of maybe bugs or flowers or whatever, and it's kind of cool if you want just a different laptop or phone background. Uh, you can see it captured color pretty well. If you give it enough daylight, it's not going to be especially grainy, but as soon as you get indoors into a darker environment, it quickly deteriorates the quality. Now, the second camera is the depth camera that uh, you're really only going to use when you're doing things like AR Doodle, for example, or another really great thing is when you're using portrait mode, which on Samsung phones they call live focus mode. Same idea though, and previously what you'd have is when you took a, a portrait of you, it would detect the outline of the human being in the picture, and then everything else around you, it would just blur. And so if you're sitting on a chair or a bench, it really looks weird and really kind of awkward. So that depth camera does a really good job, as you can see here in this live focus photo, uh, of, of really kind of detecting not only the edges of me, but also the bench that is in the same plane as me. So that did a really good job, and I was impressed by that lens. Now the ultra wide angle lens, I think is really fun to use and it's really cool to have on this if you're in a really tight room and you want to take a picture of a bunch of people it's really nice to have it although there is some significant distortion on the edges the photos are also generally very warm I don't know why the color is shifted much farther on the warmer and kind of almost brownish side for a lot of things and you'll see that in the video as well but 12 megapixels, it also shoots 4K, so I really do like having that. When you're shooting video with this, you can't actually zoom in uh, from the ultra wide angle lens. I don't know why that is, but for some reason they don't allow that. Getting into the main sensor, the wide angle lens, that's 48 megapixels on this phone. It does a pretty decent job of capturing photos. Uh, I find that like my skin tones looked a little bit washed out and overall it was a little bit flat. The greens were pretty saturated and I liked that. Um, but otherwise, like it did a decent job. It looks like an okay, it looks like a pretty good photo. And then lastly, the selfie camera on here, one quick thing to note aesthetically is you can kind of see a metal ring in there. So if you turn the phone in the right lighting, it really kind of shines and it really accents. The 32 megapixel sensor on the selfie camera, it does an okay job. It, it takes pretty good photos. I don't know why you would need 32 megapixels on a selfie camera, like I said before, uh, but it's, it's there if you want it. All right guys, this is the front facing camera on the Galaxy A51, so comment down below. Let me know how this looks and sounds. It's a little bit loud out here, a lot of birds. All right, this is the main rear camera on the Galaxy A51, and there is no microphone directly on the back here, so you're gonna be using the top and bottom microphones. All right, now this is the primary rear camera with steady mode on. So this is super steady right here. If I walk around, you'll see that it almost looks like it's on a gimbal. This is really incredible. Even if I jump up and down, you get a little bit of warping on the edges, but it looks pretty good. I'm just looking at the ultra wide angle lens without any kind of steady mode on or anything. It looks pretty good walking around. It's still pretty steady. The colors are very vibrant. There's a little bit of warping on the edges like this tree. When you look at it, it's a lot straighter than when you see in the corner, but otherwise it does a decent job. Now there is a time limit. We can only record videos up to 10 minutes. It's showing me that on the screen right here. All right, now here is the primary rear camera in the video. Uh, and so it looks like the autofocus, it kind of struggles to know what I'm trying to focus on. I'm looking at this plant right here, but if I tap it on the screen, it focuses in just fine. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of tap focusing if you're moving around a lot with this, but it looks pretty good, pretty vibrant colors. And again, this too has a 10 minute recording limit in 4K. All right, so now for a quick fingerprint sensor speed test, you'll see it's located in the bottom of the screen right there. So if I just tap my thumb on there, it signs in reasonably quick, although I find that occasionally I miss it. So I missed it right there. But once you get it, once you get the hang of it, it signs in fast enough. Now let's go and test out the speakers. 71. These are fundamentally different approaches to what a mid-range phone should be. And in this so honestly, the speaker is probably not going to be great for music, but for basic videos, it does a decent job. A big plus with this phone and kind of getting into software, this actually does have night mode. And I really do like to see that in mid-range phones. Like the iPhone SE, for example, does not have night mode. So 
if, as soon as it gets dark out, you're pretty much useless for taking photos. Now, this does have one UI, the latest one UI, so second generation there, and it has really everything you would expect in there. The screen recording, it has the, like, the Bixby routines, music sharing, uh, Samsung Kids focus mode, pretty much everything you're expecting is on this phone. Now, something I recommend doing, especially because this is not the fastest processor and also because it's a 60 hertz refresh rate screen, which is very typical among phones, I recommend going into settings and reducing animation. Sometimes one UI has too many animations. I also increased touch sensitivity, so the phone just feels a lot faster. Now getting into the pros and cons of this phone, first of all, pro is that you have the option to get either six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM, so that's nice for people who need that extra RAM get the eight gigabyte version. Uh, it also has, I think overall, going through the claims that Samsung made, the awesome screen, the awesome battery, and the awesome camera. So the screen, is it awesome? I mean, it's a very big, very bright screen, has really good color on there, uh, has a pretty decent resolution. It's not 4K or really anything it's super high definition there, but you know, it's a pretty good screen. The hole punch on the top is relatively small, so I would say for a mid-range phone, yeah, it's an awesome screen. In general, there's plenty of flagships that have better screens out there. Now, the awesome cameras, keep in mind that megapixels don't mean everything. So the cameras for a $400 phone are definitely pretty good, it's decent. And, I, and you gotta realize here that people taking photos with a mid-range phone are not looking to become you know, professional wedding photographers with that. Obviously, you're trying to take pictures of your family or do you know whenever you're in cool places, maybe have some fun photos. And this phone is definitely enabling you to do that. You have a whole arsenal of different camera lenses and they all look pretty good. They're not going to be at the same caliber as the Pixel or the iPhone photos necessarily, but I think they look, you know, they look pretty good. And then the battery life on here does last easily a full day for me. So I'd say, I wouldn't say awesome. You're not gonna get like three days out of this, but it's a decent battery. So as far as pros go, I think it really lived up to those three claims there for the most part. I think that it's also really nice that we have um, and like cool things like the headphone jack that also acts as an antenna for your FM radio if you want to listen to radio on this. Now, so far this phone seems really great, but of course there are a couple drawbacks that you want to be aware of. So the first one is that the fingerprint sensor on here is actually an optical fingerprint sensor. It's not the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that we see on the Note and the S series. And instead this one is, it'll flash a green light at you and it is a little bit slower. And from my experience, if I just set up one fingerprint with this, it generally kind of sucks. A lot of times I have to tap my finger and tap it a couple times. So what I recommend doing is going into your settings and adding another fingerprint, but that extra fingerprint is the same finger. So add the same finger twice in here, and then you really shouldn't have any problems with that. But another complaint about the fingerprint sensor is that it's really low on the screen. So I feel like either you grab from the bottom in a weird way, or you have to flex your thumb all the way down to the bottom. And on such a large screen, I would like to see it a little bit higher up like we're seeing on the S series. Now another small complaint is I think I would rather have a telephoto lens than the macro lens. Just for me personally, I'm never gonna use the macro lens, but if you wanna zoom in, what you can do is you would take a 48 megapixel shot and then crop it in. And I actually, interestingly enough, tried this compared to zooming in and then taking a photo, and it's higher quality when you take the 48 megapixel shot and then crop it in afterwards. Then as I mentioned before, it doesn't have an IP water resistance rating. It also doesn't have wireless charging. Those are kind of expected for mid-range phones, definitely drawbacks nonetheless. And lastly, the button layout on the new Samsung phones, including the S20, is really not my favorite. I don't like having all the buttons on one side. It's a little bit annoying when you're trying to take screenshots, but so guys, there you have it. That's what I have to say about the Galaxy A51. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this phone, if you like it or not, if you think you'll be buying it. And of course, I will be comparing it to quite a few other phones in the future, like the iPhone SE, the Pixel 4a, if that ever exists, uh, and a bunch of other mid-range phones like that. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below with any questions you have about this phone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.